an entrepreneur and a celebrated anthropologist, Mr. Who has been studying issues concerning the survival of humans for almost four decades. Today, we're honored to have him talk about his research and answer our questions on the sustainable existence of our species. Studying human issues for almost 40 years, what encourages you to keep going and never give up? As a young student, I lived in a remote village during the Cultural Revolution, a time when education was abandoned in China. I hardly had any access to scientific and technical knowledge. When I entered college in 1979, things had changed. Books were available in the library, and our teachers knew a lot. Soon, I was introduced to the mass energy formula of the special theory of relativity. Energy equals mass multiplying the square of the speed of light. According to this formula, the energy contained in a gram of a substance is equal to that of 20,000 tons of TNT. A gram is only the weight of one single peanut, yet 20,000 tons of TNT is enough to destroy a whole city. I also learned that a hydrogen bomb with a destructive force equivalent to 56 million tons of TNT was exploded in the Soviet Union. In fact, a nuclear weapon of even greater scale can both technically or theoretically be produced. This caused me to wonder, with such an overwhelming power, will scientific technology exterminate human beings someday? I thought it's well worth consideration. So I devoted myself to relevant literature on the matter. Soon, an idea occurred to me. Humans have been able to advance science and technology from its initial stages to its current sophistication in just over two centuries. With the Industrial Revolution in the 1750s marking a time of serious development, based upon my intuition, Regarding this advancement, science and technology have the power to destroy us as a 17-year-old. Was I correct in this regard? Its destruction by science and technology is millennia away. Then perhaps we needn't worry too much. It's a problem that the future generations will solve. But what if it's looming? Is there any problem more important? Is there any crisis more worrying? So, will it happen? If it will, are we able to solve it and how? That's what I feel is worth studying. One may find it hard to do something significant during their lifetime. So, I made up my mind to devote my whole life to this issue, to thoroughly investigating and promoting my findings. And this has taken almost 40 years. As my investigation progresses, its severity and urgency occur to me more and more. I've long since viewed it as more than a career. It is one of my responsibilities, a responsibility shared by all people. You mentioned that the ongoing development of scientific technology is doomed to exterminate humans. What's your foundation? In fact, nuclear weapons have already been the imposing tool of devastation. Yet, we know that nuclear weapons won't exterminate humans. This has been concluded in academia. In the case of nuclear war, 
even if all the nuclear weapons explode and kill billions of people, causing a nuclear winter as a result, there would still be some survivors through whom humans can start from scratch. Actually, there are numerous technologies more powerful and dangerous than nuclear weapons and may very well exterminate humans with further advancements. For instance, many scientists worry that bioengineering is going to exterminate us. Through the genetic technology, genes are edited and rearranged and modified in bioweapon toxins, such as virus and bacteria, so that they can attack targeted organs in the human body and transmit super pandemics. Some also worry that nanotechnology will exterminate us on the condition that nanorobots developed through this technology can not only destroy us, but also the planet if their programs run out of control. At present, more people are concerned that artificial intelligence could also destroy us. AI robots failing to run normally or if equipped with self-awareness could destroy us as a whole. The cases I have mentioned are not only mass destructive, but also worrisome in that they are beyond our control, you know. The production of nuclear weapons requires the resources of a nation. However, the aforementioned scientific technologies are available to companies and senior scientists. It's feasible to manage a country's conduct, but hard to regulate that of individuals. Therefore, I think the ongoing development of science and technology is doomed to exterminate humans in as long as two or three centuries or as few as several decades. What should we do if scientific technology is indeed likely to exterminate humans? I can summarize my research findings into several overall points and some specific ones. The first overall point is also the most acceptable one, in my opinion, yet has been accepted by only a few. As I have mentioned, the ongoing development of scientific technology is doomed to exterminate humans in as long as two or three centuries or as few as several decades. Even if none of the above-mentioned technologies exterminate humans, so long as scientific technology continues to develop, it will definitely produce something more powerful. So, I think to avoid our extinction, we must limit the development of scientific technology. There's a simple logic in this. The ongoing development of scientific technology is doomed to exterminate humans. Therefore, we must limit it to avoid extinction. But everything we have now is related to scientific technology. So, are you totally against it? Of course not. Instead, we should treat it dialectically. Scientific technology is like a double-edged sword, benefiting us yet harming us as well. The more it benefits, the more harm it brings. What concerns us is our potential extinction due to its limitless expansion. Without the existence of human beings, there is no one to enjoy the benefits technology might bring. 
for those talently safe and mature technologies. We should popularize them all over the world, rather than limit them, so that they can benefit mankind at large. As for the risky ones, mere limits are far from enough. Regress limits are demanded since the overall existence of humans comes forced.